In our last episode, we ran with the bulls, well, cows, in Montana, getting all the way to Dillon. This week, we finish Montana and enter Wyoming. I left Dillon on my bike early, riding on flat roads through the Beaverhead Valley, so named because of Beaverhead Rock, down to Twin Bridges. I virtually flew on this stretch, thanks to a strong tailwind. Carol, meanwhile, got some bad directions from her phone and ended up on this dirt road dodging lots of large potholes at about 5 to 10 miles per hour for a few miles in our rented van. No fun. Once I turned south at Twin Bridges, my tailwind was gone and it was slow going. I'll fast forward for you here. Eventually, I got to Alden and Sheridan, where I met up with Carol amidst road construction, and we took a break for coffee and some pastries. Carol had time to smell the lilac, too. Then it was back on the road for both of us. They were flat roads with a good shoulder, but got more rolling as we neared the mountains, and then got lumpy and cloudy as we neared Adobe Town, a spot on the edge of Nevada City that used to be a town. I kept rolling to Virginia City in search of lunch and met Carol at Nacho Mama's. Virginia City is an interesting place, so we sightseed for a bit before the ominous skies spurred me on. Carol stuck around to explore, learning more about a hanging that made the town nefarious for a while, and then headed to the pass as the rain began. She offered me a ride when she came by, but I was enjoying the pain, almost as much as I enjoyed the descent down to Ennis. Little wet? Little wet. How was the descent? Great descent. A lot of fun. Wasn't that view gorgeous? Yeah. Carol had already checked us in, so I rested my tired legs at the hotel as she went to do laundry, which is often a challenge on the road. Then we drove to the local bowling alley slash restaurant for dinner. Service was painfully slow thanks to a shortage of workers, a common problem that we saw on this trip. I miss you, baby. Miss you too. Love you. See you in 20, 30 miles. Have a fun ride. The next morning, I left Ennis riding through the pretty touristy area and then got dumped onto the real road. The posted but ignored speed limit was 70 miles per hour, and the bit of shoulder left for me was barely two feet wide. With the crosswind, that was tough riding. Other than speeding vehicles, there really wasn't anything to look at either. At least, nothing worth getting killed over. So, I called an audible. I pulled over and waited, and when Carol came by, we put my bike in the van for a few miles. Then I got out where we decided it was safe again. The nicer section here rolled along the Madison River, on a road with a decent shoulder. Soon, all of the zooming trucks turned south on Highway 87 and I continued to Earthquake Lake. I met Carol again here, and we learned about how an earthquake in 1959, the year that we were born, had created this lake one night, killing 28 people. Watching the flow of the river down from the lake now, it was easy to imagine the terror of the people living here then. We both continued up the road from here, heading to Hebgen Lake. Carol and I reconnected at the dam, where a sign warned us that there were bison out on the roads. Of course, neither of us saw any that day, but forewarned, we rode on. 
A few miles later, I ran into another cycling tourist, and we stopped to chat. He was the first rider we had seen on this route. Tell me who you are again. Craig. Craig, from Tacoma. From Tacoma, yeah. Puget Sound. <laughs> uh, All right. At the end of the lake, I got on busy US-191 to go to West Yellowstone. I met Carol for a lunch of elk, bison, and beef sliders. And then we checked into our funky hotel, the White Buffalo. Later, we walked to a Chinese restaurant for dinner, where I got this prescient fortune in my cookie. The next day, I walked my bike out through the crowded lobby and biked into Yellowstone Park, crossing into Wyoming near the park gate. I had already purchased my ticket, which Good made morning. it easier How to get in. Good. How are you? Since the park was just opening, there were a lot of cars on the road with me. To avoid them, I pulled into a couple of scenic areas on the route and waited. And waited. And waited. Eventually, the traffic thinned as the opening rush passed. There were people enjoying the river by fishing in it. And other creatures were wading in it. Or just sitting by it. The geysers probably made for some nice warm water. They certainly made for some steamy scenes. There were hissing geysers, green geysers, smoky geysers, showy geysers. And soupy geysers. Carol enjoyed the geysers and toured two sets of them, but I went straight to the Mac Daddy geyser itself. Old Faithful. I arrived just in time for its next scheduled eruption. Nature's show over, everyone left for the gift shop. After connecting again with Carol, I got back on the road. The serious climbing began soon after. In the park, I crossed the Continental Divide two more times. I was way up there. Unfortunately, there was a lot of construction on US-191, which was the only road I had for the remaining 60 miles of my planned route. Carol went by and offered again to ferry me past the bad stuff. But this was the climbing, and I wanted to do that. Eventually, with a cold rain coming in, we met up at the Little Grant Village Mini Mart, the only food option for miles. Since both restaurants there were closed, again, due to a lack of staff, I got a sandwich and then put my bike into the van as we rolled on out of the park, past the Grand Tetons, and on down to our hotel in Jackson Hole. Since this was our last day with the van, we ran some final errands and had a fast food dinner before turning in for the night at our hotel. We got to bed early because we knew that the next day was going to be tough with a long, wet climb up Toggety Pass, dodging hungry bears. But that's for the next episode. I'll see you then.